Hello, ladies and gentlemen, ActoSage here on the Sage channel, and if you are unaware, this week's Space Engineers update brought with it a Merrick blog post, and if you don't know who Merrick is, he is the Keen Software House CEO. He is the guy who runs the company that makes Space Engineers, Medieval Engineers, and now Good AI as well. So, anyway... What he did today, when the update came out, is he also posted a roadmap for medieval engineers and space engineers. Which basically means this is where the game, or games in this case, plan to go in the future. And what I'm going to do right now is simply read through this, that way you can have all the information in it, and maybe every now and again make a comment on what has been said. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead, I'll load up the blog right there. And we'll start at the top, of course. The Keen Software House Roadmap for 2016, Space Engineers and Medieval Engineers. As I promised in the Year in Review blog I published a couple of days ago, I would like to share with you the Space Engineers and Medieval Engineers Roadmap for 2016. This comes in contrast to our decision to only talk about features that are actually present in our games, fully finished or work in progress, and not speak about planned features, ideas, future dates, basically our roadmap, etc, etc. The reason why I'm making this exception now is because I believe that after two years in early access, our players have a better understanding of our development decisions. Additionally, people deserve to know how our games are shaping up especially Space Engineers, as we are approaching the final turn in the game's development before it leaves Early Access. Before I continue, I would like to remind everyone that everything I say here is subject to change. Important! Some of my comments may sound harsh to my colleagues who are actively working on these games. Let me assure you all that we have the same goal. Make our game's great. Now, really quickly, Sage here would just like to say one little thing. He does say that it's coming to a final turn in the game's development before it leaves early access. Nobody panicked. This doesn't mean they're abandoning the game. It just means these are their final objectives before it leaves early access. They may continue to add features. I don't know for sure, but I can be pretty sure that they're not just going to up and abandon it. Anyway, back to the blog post. I also want to mention that I will not go very deep into details or explain each and every feature separately in this blog. That's for separate design documents. Instead, I'm going to be playtesting both games live on Twitch as I did on this past Monday. Most likely on a weekly basis, usually on Mondays, where I will point out the issues I find in our games. We are also planning to do focus testing groups for random players with no experience with space engineers or medieval engineers play the games for the first time to see what issues they encounter, where they get stuck, what they enjoy most, and what troubles them, etc. I would also like to point out that there will be a link in the description down below to this blog post, of course, as well as to his Twitch page. So if you'd like to go ahead and watch Merrick, the CEO of Keen Software House, play his games every week and see him actually giving feedback to the development team weekly or as frequently as he ends up doing it, you can go ahead and uh, follow that link to find that there. Anyway, carrying on, the Space Engineers Roadmap. After two years in early access, I believe that Space Engineers has a vast amount of features, perhaps even more than what was needed. But we always want to keep the development going and add new features consistently since there are so many community suggestions that could be a great addition to the game. For example, I never would have imagined two years ago that we'd add planets. One of our top priorities is to improve multiplayer. It's not only about network coding, but it is also related to game logic optimization. We are working on a method where we will put all non-real-time game logic in a secondary thread. For example, the computations for drilling, refinery, conveyors, auction won't delay the main thread, which is to stay real-time. 
The reason is that players can always build crazily huge things which slow down the game, regardless of how much we optimize it, and if players perceive non-smooth movement, they think it's a bug. So what they're going to be doing is taking things like the refinery, things you don't notice all the time, like oxygen, you know, usually it's only noticed when you open and close a door, conveyors if they're actually connected to one another and is set up on a piping system, things like that. They're only going to update those every so often by separating that out of the main thread. I believe that's the main gist of this. So that movement will be updated constantly, but other things, like I've just mentioned, will only be updated every now and again. Anyway, continuing on... The development cycle of a game is complex, but its core idea does not differ from the development of the majority of products that are out on the market today. I will give you an example to understand this better. Let's assume that you are producing a car. The first thing you do is assemble all necessary parts. After this phase is done, you take the car for a test drive. You identify any possible issues, and then you fix them. After all issues are fixed, the car is functioning properly, you add the final touches, painting, polish, etc. Then you're ready to start selling the car. The same principles apply to our game. Space Engineers is now in the phase where, nearly, all necessary parts have been assembled, and we are ready to move to the major polishing and bug fixing phase. This will probably be the longest and final bug fixing period before the game is released in its final state. Now, I do find his analogy is somewhat on, but a little off in the idea that you don't just assemble a car, of course. If you're building a car, you design it out. But I think his analogy holds very well for, in a way, crash testing. So the first stage of designing cars, you of course design it. You continue to add features to a car. Now, you do have to go back and forth a little bit, testing it every now and again to make sure you've not added too many features to make sure the features play nice with each other. But you actually get it to a point where you got most of the things you're going to have in the car. You got the design down the way you want, and then you crash test the car. I'd say that's the point he's saying we're getting to. We're getting to the point where the car is pretty much ready to go. It just needs to be crash tested now to make sure we didn't miss anything. And sometimes, of course, cars are usually crash tested all the way up to that point, but this is sort of the final crash test, the final little tests to fix any serious bugs we, that have been missed and then move on. Anyway, enough of me interjecting something. Let's continue on. Please note, the list below is random and doesn't reflect the priority that we give to each action. As I mentioned previously, our topmost priorities are to fix all annoying issues that make the game unplayable for many of you, improve the multiplayer, and polish the game. So basically what that's saying there is, the list I'm about to read through is not necessarily in any sort of order whatsoever. These are just some of the things, if not all of the things, that they're shooting the change. I personally hope for thumpers myself to be added to this, and maybe a few little things like different suits that are actually swapped on and off, and the new character models, and this, that, and the other thing, but I suspect some of that might be found here. Enough of me babbling. Here is the list for the Space Engineer's roadmap. These are the features they're hoping to add before considering the game complete and ready to leave early access. Please take into account that this list might not be complete, some of the things might not be done or change in the future, or other things might be added. I'll also add in anything I have to say on any of these subjects, so let's carry on. Multiplayer, polishing, checking design, lag, compensation. So ways to compensate for, I guess, multiplayer issues, checking designs, pretty straightforward, honestly. Except for, of course, it actually means a bunch of technical nonsense that I don't fully comprehend. Fix all sounds, 3D, arcade, or realistic. Ask programmers and our sound design to make a list of all sounds used in the game. And then have someone test them all, so that we don't miss anything. Pretty straightforward, that. Voxels, data cell catch, storage, optimization, profiling voxel runtime. I don't I, I don't fully understand any of that right there, so moving on. Render fixes, ambient, environment map, lighting, reflections, occlusion quarry, ambient, and backlight. So I believe that's a lot of, mainly talking about how the textures on objects are rendered. Because usually even a reflection is actually a reflection map. It's a 2D image that's made, like a 360 camera, basically, that's projected onto objects. So looks like they're working to uh, fix any rendering issues they currently have and maybe expand on that, too. 
occlusion calling block slash voxels speed up the rendering. This is actually a massive, massive thing. In the old days in Space Engineers, it was assumed that whenever you put two blocks together, the face that went in between the two blocks was still seen. Eventually, they made it so, absolutely, that face doesn't get seen. Well, here, talking about occlusion calling block blocks and voxels basically means that if you cannot see that spaceship, it is not being rendered at all. Even if it's being blocked by part of its own body, you can only see the part that's being seen. That's what occlusion calling is. If you can't see it, it's not going to be rendered, which is a massive, massive saver. If you've ever seen any Unreal 3 games or Unreal Engine 4, I think even, if you turn too quickly the way blocks pop in, that's actually because they were not being rendered there before. That's usually not a problem anymore on faster systems, but that's basically what we need to get into this game is the idea that when you're not looking at it, when something else is standing in its way, it's not being rendered. Even if that's part of the same ship that's blocking it, you just need those areas not to be rendered at all. Then I hope to God they get that working quick, or at least well, because that will be fantastic. Hopefully it allows to build some larger things again. Disable object highlight on LCD screens. It's annoying. <laughs> That uh, can be agreed there. Whenever you look at an LCD screen, it has a highlight like, click on me. Bit annoying. Odd that they have it in the roadmap, though. Optimization and fixing the loading screen. And checking if there are worlds that take forever to load while not properly informing the player. Fix loading screen issues, e.g. when we all get stuck at the end and I can hear the in-game sounds. You can tell some of these were very directly written for Merrick, and this is sort of the list he's also given to the team, I'd say. Red message box. Make the background texture less transparent. It's hard to read text on it. Conveyor system optimization. Interestingly, conveyor system optimization and the next one, drilling slash mining optimization, sort of ties into the multi-thread thing they were talking about, about multiplayer. But I believe it also just means they want to optimize these things so they're not checking as frequently, and maybe there's other things they can do too that I just don't know about. New animation system slash caching speed optimization. Other optimizations. Fix ugly animations. Ooh. Add new animations, e.g. holding a weapon. Ooh. Walking over small debris doesn't work. The player has to jump over them. Thank God, they're going to change that. Jumping and holding the forward movement key doesn't result in a forward jump. And this doesn't feel right. And if you don't know... If you're standing still and you try to basically jump and then hit W at the same time, or you're stuck in a spot where you're trying to jump over something and you don't really have a room to back up, and you just hold W and run into a wall and then you jump, you're not actually going to go forward at all. You're just going to go straight up. They're hoping to change that from the looks of it. Shooting and weapons. A few more new weapons. Pretty awesome to hear that. I personally am still hoping for some sort of energy weapon, even if it's like the modern-day laser weapons, which are simply, well, a consistent laser that bursts things onto fire after 30 seconds or so. It'd be nice to have something like that. It'd be good to turn for bugs, I'd think. We need much better animations, holding weapon, ammo reload. In general, we need a basic FPS experience. All in all, I'm very excited to hear that they're thinking about redoing all the animations. I don't think this means they're going to have a new rig, maybe not even a new suit, unfortunately, but it would be pretty cool if we did find ourselves with a, well, nice, really shiny new spacesuit, as well as, of course, I personally am always wanting the idea that you can take suits on and off and switch to different ones that actually had to build them. I think that would be pretty nifty. And then, at the medical bay, you'd simply just change your species or something like that. Pretty damn nifty, too, to hear that he wants a basic FPS experience, because obviously if you try to do much shooting in the game currently, it's not too fun, so it would be cool to have a better FPS experience, or a even decent FPS experience in there, really. Saving, please wait. Hide this overlay text, and do saving a synchronicity without bothering the player. Why does the game autosave in multiplayer, when I am the client and manually save isn't available? Also, I think something that should have been pointed out there is why isn't manual save available to other people who have joined my server? That used to be an option. It's permanently grayed out now. Remembering remove trees on planets, aka trees have a habit of coming back if you knock them down, destroy them. NVIDIA Gameworks. Consider HBAO, which I believe is a form of ambient occlusion, plus anti-aliasing, aka speed up anti-aliasing so it doesn't slow you down so much. SE indication of hydrogen fuel. I think that's probably a in-ship indication of hydrogen fuel, so when you're actually in a ship, you can tell how much fuel you have left, which can be a bit annoying at times, as I don't think it currently shows that. I'm assuming that's what that means. 
spectator flashlight slash night vision. I am super excited for this. Honestly, I wish when you went into spectator mode, you could toggle on an option and even be like one of the small drones from Halo. That would be pretty nifty. But at the very least, this is something I've wanted for a long, long time is the ability to have a flashlight or night vision while you're actually playing a spectator. That way, let's say you're building a large, massive mega ship and you're flying around the inside of it. And suddenly you realize you haven't gotten to the point of putting lights in. So everything is pitch black and you can no longer work. You have to go slowly in there with it. You get the point. Anyway, moving on. Object highlight outline also in Medieval Engineers, which I believe is when you mouse over an object, they want it to highlight from the looks of it, which could be pretty damn nifty. I'm sure a lot of people would argue they'd like that feature to be all toggleable, but I still think it's a nice feature to have nonetheless. Finish support for scenarios, mission scripts, and submissions. We'll need for tutorials. Better support for gradual tutorials, story-based tutorials, submissions. Finish building from cockpit. Something I've noticed actually myself is that when you're in a cockpit, sometimes when you try to build from inside the cockpit, doing the control G thing to switch building mode to building mode instead of just flight mode, it has a habit of sometimes not working right or not projecting the holographic display when you're trying to rotate blocks and things like that. So I definitely would like to see that. Rethink the way respawning, respawn ships, landing ships, and rethink mobile tools. Manual assembler, so players can respawn without a ship and still be able to start building? So what they're saying there is they're Merrick's starting to think maybe starting with this derpy landing ship or this huge easy start world seems a bit much. Maybe there should be an easier way to start from scratch. Which would also imply maybe they have another idea for, I don't know, moving the explody dogs or doing some way to neutralize them. Because if you're just on foot building on an easy start world, I think you're going to find yourself in some serious trouble come nightfall. Ragdoll plus IK. Bullet impact, falling, four-legged. Four-legged werewolf? What? Oh, no, probably like the explodey dogs. But basically, that's cool to see the Ragdoll plus IK. IK are often the way legs will move in games. The idea is if we had an IK system in this game, you might be able to step over those things mentioned earlier more easily, and the character's legs would actually, one would be on the ground, and one would actually be elevated. You'll see that in often modern games where the character will actually use these steps when going up a flight of stairs. Official persistent servers. That's pretty nifty. The idea that they have official servers that are just always up there. Automated tests for our testers. Buy dedicated computers where the game will run 24-7. That's pretty nifty. They'll definitely be finding a lot of bugs real quick with that. I can bet you money there. Maybe they'll find out why my FPS keeps dropping recently. Hmm. Redo the GUI framework. This doesn't mean changing the graphics, it only means the underlying tech, which has become very cluttered over time. I personally want them to redo the graphics for some of the GUI and stuff. It's and I, I, I want to be able to scale it, let's be honest, more than anything. It's all very big for me. Game logic optimizations, plus oxygen, mostly for multiplayer, plus oxygen sensor. Honestly, I think we can all agree we've wanted an oxygen sensor that doesn't necessarily mean a just a vent. And also these game logic optimizations is what they were talking about up top about the multiple threads. One that's real time and one that doesn't need to be. Add voxel material in survival, something pretty much everyone has requested. The ability to actually place down the concrete, maybe actually adding what you dug up, let's say dirt, back to the ground. Improve tutorials, reduce the usage of text panels. Deliver the info to the player via context-sensitive screen hints. When I launch the first interactive tutorial, I see two things that I shouldn't see. The respawn screen and you have been accepted to a faction. Quick start will be our interactive tutorial with minimum text. HUD submission navigation, its purpose will be to engage the player and not to explain everything that happens in the game. After we add this new tutorial, remove the video tutorial message box. Development of Xbox One version. So, there you go. That's the roadmap for Space Engineers. Quite the thing, isn't it? Quite a few things there. I still feel like some stuff is thumpers missing. Um, suit. But, nonetheless, pretty nifty. And, of course, that's not necessarily everything. And as they go on, I'm sure they'll be doing lots of little tweaks. I do want to point out that people need to... Start to understand that this game will not necessarily have new features added every week. Looking at this, you would expect almost no new features at all. 
Frankly, you just see lots of fixes and optimizations and improvements to already existing things. It doesn't mean the game's going to die, it just means that looks to be the way they're heading. I personally, as I said, still want some other things, some thumpers, and it looks like they're working towards more modding support as well, but, suits, I am not going to be negative on them for this because, let's be honest, their game originally had a much, much smaller vision and they've already expanded it quite a bit. Now, if you are only here for Space Engineers, there's going to be a little bit more for you down here at the V-Rage section, but for the time being, I'm just going to try to get through the Medieval Engineers roadmap really quick, just in case you find yourself interested in that. Now, I probably won't really be adding too much into this. I do like Medieval Engineers, I'm just more of a fantasy guy than a standard, just medieval sort of person. Even though I do find it quite enjoyable using blocks inside blocks. Merrick, where are they in space? Anyway, Medieval Engineers roadmap. In Medieval Engineers, things are a bit different from Space Engineers. The game will complete one year on Early Access very soon, and many of the features that we plan to implement are already in the game. E.g. Survival Mode, Castle Siege Mode, Multiplayer, Simple AI Characters, and Crafting. However, many of these features have various issues or their implementation is very rough, in a clear work-in-progress stage. The overall gameplay lacks a polished feeling. E.g., the first few minutes might feel very annoying for some players, myself included. The controls and gameplay is not intuitive. There are weird animations, etc., etc. These are the things we will improve first so we can then continue adding new elements. Please note the order of the below list is random and doesn't reflect the priority that we give each action. As I said, I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly unless something really catches my eye. Medieval Engineers Roadmap. Add planets to Medieval Engineers. This what? This will unify the technology in our games and make future improvements easier. What I believe he means by adding planets is basically the procedurally generated world. It might be just one planet, one very large planet, or even a horizontal planet that just goes in every direction, similar to space and... Or, oh, medieval... Bleh, Minecraft, that's the one. Jesus. Minecraft. But of course it would be like the planets from space and engineers just flat. Yeah, you get it. You get it. Animation polishing. Inventory size rebalance. Character stat rebalance. Multiplayer fixes and polishing. Polish the in-game screens. Fix all sounds 3D. Ask programmers and our sound designers to make a list of all sounds used in the game and then have someone test them all. So that we don't miss anything. Combat system. Yes, please. Look at Vermintide. This is Sage talking. Look at Vermintide. If anybody happens to be watching this from Keen Software House, look at Vermintide. That game has the best melee system ever invented. It is moving on. AI changes. Fixes. Simplification. Build on a grid. Large grid construction site. Small grid construction site. Rethink if the respawn cart is necessary. Why can't the player respawn in a normal way? Test scenarios for dev. Tool durability and tool damage. New animals, e.g. wolves. Oh, don't make me kill wolves. Bears, etc. Fix Z fighting. If you know what Z fighting is, it's basically where there's two textures on top of each other and they flicker between the two. Door and window blocks, yes please. Gate blocks, yes please. Mechanical blocks, yes please. Redo the manipulation tool, remove it from the toolbar, add it to the context sensitive action key, e.g. T, disable physics while the player is holding an item. That way it's not bumping into everything and you don't break everything, pretty cool. Faction system, claim of an area. Support to add voxels and survival, similar to what is wanted in Space Engineers, one would assume. Area inventories. Remove this feature. Players should not have access to the inventories and items that are not in the direct vicinity of those that they are interacting with directly. That's a feature I actually quite like, the area inventory, but I feel the area should have been a five foot area around you. Apparently, according to what he's saying there, it's actually a quite larger area. That was one of those things where, you know, you got 400 boxes, which one did I put that stone in or whatnot. Regrowing trees and bushes. New maps and worlds. Again, he uses worlds, so maybe he is thinking of having actual multi-planets here, or who knows? We'll find out, I guess, as time goes on. 
And maybe we'll have a dwarven teleportation gate or something interesting like that. Who knows? Can I be a werewolf? More voxel materials such as iron, sandstone, etc. More multi-blocks. More compound block combinations. I need that in space in your Merrick. Specialized workshops. And specialized furnaces. Pretty cool, that. The idea of having machines for specific things. I like that. Alrighty, so we went through that. That didn't take too long, I don't think. Moving on. Here we have V-Rage, which actually affects both games. And if you don't know, V-Rage is the game engine for medieval engineers and space engineers. And this is basically the thing I said that, hey... If you only like Space Engineers content, this is also something you want to hear. So let's go ahead and read through this nice and quick like, because it does have some pretty nifty and interesting information in it. Add slash build new blocks and grids. Finish the redesign. Static, dynamic, small, large, creative, survival construction sites. I'm not going to lie to you, I almost have no idea what they mean by construction sites, but add slash build new blocks slash grids, I'm pretty sure they just mean by add and build the blocks that the games feel like they still need. And of course, finish the redesign. I get the feeling that's two space engineers, the number of blocks that are still, well, don't look like they're actually a high-res model. Multiplayer server optimization. Read the second paragraph under the space engineers roadmap section for more detailed analysis, aka we already read that. Falling in 1G, especially in space engineers, doesn't feel like 1G. The falling is way too slow. This was caused by changes in the physics due to the moon gravity, but the result is not good. Yes, we want higher jumps on the moon, but we also want normal jumps and falls on Earth. So it looks like he's uh, asking his team to do some changes there. Finish transition to PBR, physically based rendering, and direct X11. All models and textures need to be checked. That's something I cannot agree with more, as the majority of the game still looks like it's untextured. And missing high-end models. And following that, we actually have two PBR examples here of just how pretty things can look with PBR. If you've seen my hover engines, those were PBR and all DirectX 11 fun times. And he's got these two beautiful engines, engines? Images here, and one of them looks sort of like an interior tile set that, I don't know, maybe the devs made. We could maybe see that in the future, officially, or even maybe an unofficial release to be a tutorial or something. Redesign and simplify the key and mouse controls and GUI. Check F1 help screen, left and right click. Try to do things with as few keys as possible by adding context sensitive commands. Get it to a stage where we don't need to show five to seven lines of default screen hints. I worry about this slightly because that sounds like very much Xbox One preparation, um, and they need to do that, I believe, for Xbox One, but I just worry they're going to move the insert home page up buttons completely and basically make it a press this button to cycle through different angles, where I like to have the specific control if I want to rotate this block this way. I can't. Ideally, we would have both, the contextual and the less than ideal non-contextual systems for those who want to bind specific keys to do specific things. Fix the third person aim point. First person is okay. Guess aiming in third person isn't ideal. I don't use it much. First person movement and camera. The experience needs improvement since now it feels all wrong. Okay. From pressing escape while playing a single player, menu stream, the game doesn't pause. That's just weird. <laughs> it's funny to hear Merrick say that. Or see that Merrick type that out. Proper sound when the character is running on armor blocks. Players don't hear metallic steps. You need to check all sounds in both games, as they said above. Faster executable loading. When I installed the game on a new computer and launched it from Steam, I could only see a black screen and game mouse cursor and listen to game music for about 15 seconds. I don't understand what the game is trying to do during this time before the main menu. Oh my god, and they actually said trying to upset me? Oh wow, deary deary. I think there is a splash screen that usually comes up, but okie dokie. Particle fix. Consider NVIDIA Gameworks GPU particles. AMD folk won't be happy to hear that. <laughs> Editor. Rendering, especially DirectX 11. Fix individual particles in each game and keep the low number of billboards and pixel overdraw. Programmer. Make a list of all particle effects in the game. Artists, make a list of all particles in the game. 
Then match these lists so there's no, no unfixed particles and we're not fixing a particle that's not used in the game, aka making art that shouldn't be needed. Faster world loading. Cache assets that don't change between worlds. When the game needs a voxel texture in one world, and I exit it to main menu and load a new world, this texture can stay in memory. And the same applies for hundreds of other assets. In the main menu, the game should preload the most used assets, so when the player loads a world, most of it is already loaded. But make sure this won't break the game, lags, crashes, delays, when something suddenly jumps to the player, aka using a jump drive or something spawned in. Or if preloading isn't a good option, then at least load assets asynchronously so the game doesn't lag for a few hundred milliseconds every time new assets are needed. Refactor code, e.g. cube builder. For two years we have been adding new blocks to this class. And it's time for some spring cleaning. This might actually lead to um, some mods having some issues or needing to update mods. But honestly, I think them doing the right thing for the game itself at the risk of breaking mods is probably the right thing to do. It is an early access game. This was to be expected. Emmy and Essie player skills. I don't know how I feel about player skills. I like the idea of building suits, honestly, where you... uh. Well, replace your suit and have stuff. Maybe in Emmy you have player skills, though. That's just me sage talking, though. In-game server admin tools with GUI. Take the best from Midspace's SE Toolbox and Triss's Server Extender. Assume players want to become Space Masters. There is some Space Master stuff in there. Some pretty nifty stuff, actually, that wasn't covered in an update video. But apparently he wants it to go a lot farther. Main menu redesign. Think about how we can simplify it. Workshop button. Move it somewhere else. E.g. load. Ugh, no, don't do that, Merrick. Because it shows only world workshop items, not the entire workshop, blueprints, 3D models, etc. Well, I guess that kind of makes sense, but how about have the, uh, the workshop button actually show the entire workshop instead of moving it elsewhere? Blueprints. Simplify the user interface and GUI. Economy model. Very simple. What's he, what's he mean? Does he want the whole, like, universe economy and money? Changing hands, NPCs to trade with? Interesting. We know some of that might actually be coming to medieval engineers in the future, as it was supposed to become almost a strategy game in the future, I think. Am I misremembering that? Camera shake, e.g. when near explosions, when hit by a large object, when shooting, etc. Okay, I can see that. But I honestly, personally hope that uh, they have a toggle for that on and off, and uh, maybe give us Oculus support in the future. Hardy, 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 hardy. Analyze the player's stats and see when people get stuck, where they have problems, if tutorials are actually helping them or not, what changes in game design can prolong their game time by making the game more intuitive and better. And by prolong their game time, he doesn't mean like, oh, I feel like I have to grind forever to get something done. He means by making them want to keep playing. I believe so, at least. Additionally, additionally, polishing and bug fixing ideas will appear during my Twitch gameplay sessions. If you think I missed something, please send it directly to me. And he gives his email address there. It's merrick.rosa at keenswh.com. Please report only the annoying stuff, not wishes for new features and blocks. Thanks. Also, please keep reporting bugs and other issues on the forms. I think you forgot to add a link. This year is going to be a very busy and challenging one for our teams. I am really looking forward to it. Additionally, we have decided to run a live stream tomorrow, Friday, January 15th at 7 p.m. CET on our Twitch channel, where together with our lead game designers and a few of our closest YouTubers, I will be answering your questions and providing more details about the roadmap. Please start preparing your questions. I actually believe I will uh, be involved in that. Marek Rosa, CEO, CTO, and founder, Keen Software House, and Good AI. Smiley face.
Anyway, guys and gals, uh, that live stream that was mentioned there, that's either going to be today, depending on when this video goes out, or tomorrow, depending on when this video goes out. Uh, just remember, it is the 15th at 7 p.m. CET. If your computer knows your location, simply Google 7 p.m. CET and it will convert it to your time. So you'll be able to find out when that is in your time. Anyway, guys and gals, I hope you enjoyed that read through. I have a few mixed feelings on some of the stuff Merrick has said, but for the most part, it is to be expected. This game was never supposed to be as big as it has become, and it looks like they're really wanting to fix a lot of stuff and refine it. Also, those of you who have been excited for Xbox One, some of this definitely looks like they're trying to refine it and get it ready to start moving in that direction as well. Also, it should be noted that when the game is exiting its let's add features stage and sort of going into a more let's polish and fix what we got, it's going sort of from alpha into a beta stage and then it goes on to release. Pretty damn cool to see the game making progress. Some people will be disappointed at the fact that it doesn't look like they're planning to add a million more features, but it looks like they are going to be making the game much, much better and paving the way for a million and one modders to continue to grow the game similar to how Minecraft grew for eons. Anyway, that is that. Thank you a bunch for watching. As I said, I think I'll be involved in that live stream tomorrow. At least it's tomorrow for me. Remember, it is the... 15th of January at 7 p.m. CET. So keep your eyes out on the Keen Community Network Twitch TV stream. There'll be a link to that in the description down below, as well as a link to this blog post and maybe one or two other things. Anyway, guys and gals, thank you a bunch for watching. I am Ectosage, and I'm glad you stayed to watch. Anyway, I shall see you next time. Ta-ta. And yes, I do have some sort of head cold neck throat code thing making me sound a little bit odd today. I'm sorry. Blah.